back at the bunker to finally do the uh, how to get internet in your nuclear bunker video. <laughs> um, yeah, this is going to be, I don't know how long this is going to be, uh, but I will try to keep it reasonably brief and cover the sort of the main topics. Now, obviously, uh, one thing you've got to say about a, an ROC post is, yes, it is underground. There are a number of ways to get an internet signal below ground. You can, if you're lucky, you still have the original telegraph pole. You will then have to trace the cable where it goes underground. I have brought mine into the compound here so I can get a connection below ground using that. So if you can trace, generally, depending on what, now my post is actually built back to front. Uh, most ROC posts are actually the other way, but generally the sort of incoming telephone line is about usually here, about a couple of feet down. So if you dig down, you will find it um, if you don't have the original telephone cable. Another way of doing it is to run a cable down the vent. Or if you're a master post, you can run data cable down there. You can put it down the BPA pipe if you want to. The way I do it is down the FSM pipe. So on the FSM pipe, all I've done is I've just raised it up a little bit on nuts and that will allow me to get the aerial connection running down to a modem below ground. And then to power all that, I will be using a generator and I mounted that box on so that gives me 240 volt. Alternatively, I can also use battery and I can go with solar. So I can put, got 12 volt batteries down there and I can go with solar. So I'll run the cable uh, for the antenna, which is in there. I'll show you how I mount all that. And uh, then we'll go down. Okay, so here's the cable. It is a MIMO antenna. So we have two connections for the 4G and we've got a mag mount as well. So that can click on there and that gives us our ground plane. And then this simply goes on under here and then feeds down into the post. And uh, the good thing about this one, this it has a four meter cable on it. So that will get right the way down into the monitoring room from the surface. And then it just sits like that. And that means at night time, if I'm staying here overnight, I don't have to worry about having this all locked up. It uh, gives a nice little bit of ventilation as well. And uh, if it rains, uh, we shouldn't get any water going through. Now that gasket is there for water um, and also for fallout protection. So. And it's nearly time to start getting that replaced. I have quite a few replacements and I think I might need to replace that soon. But that is the antenna connection. Uh, it used to be years ago when I first came here, uh, there was no 4G. Um, luckily now I do have 4G. So this is a nice little antenna. Uh, I was using a different antenna, but I bought this one recently, basically because it's a mag mount and it, you know, that's not going anywhere. And it's a 7 dB gain on it. So we'll go down below ground. I'll show you how I sort of connect everything up below ground. And I'll show you a range of modems and uh, different things that you can try uh, in your bunker. Okay, so the generator is running above ground now. And you can see there's the uh, two ends of the antenna coming down. So I've got a couple of extension cables uh, that I'm going to join on. And I'm going to get them run over beside the radio box there and uh, then we'll go from there. Okay, the extension cable are, is run. Now I've just run it pretty loosely here, uh, just to show. Generally what I would do is I would run the cable up over these hooks and then run it over the back. And I might exchange them actually for smaller ones. Um, looking at the length, I uh, probably only need a set of two meter cables uh, to do this uh, rather than the four meters that I bought. So I think, actually it might be five meters. So I think I'll exchange them for uh, two meter ones, just to make it a bit easier. So the modems. Okay, this is the one I've had the longest. That's a Huawei one. And this is a really nice little modem uh, router. Works really well. Uh, I've have, I have my Virgin SIM card in that. Never had a problem with this modem or router, router, modem router. Then I have this one from TP-Link. Uh, I have a three SIM card in this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to test both 
and uh, test the three and test virgin here and see which one gets a better signal. And uh, then I have these older ones. Now, HSUPA is fast 3G. Um, well, fastish 3G. Uh, it's, this is what I used originally. Then I upgraded to this one, which is sort of the HSPA plus is sort of basic 4G. So it's, it's just, it's very, very fast uh, 3G. Now you can plug them in by a 240 volt if you want to. Uh, you can go with a cigarette lighter adapter that you can get for these as long as they have the, uh, the correct end on it. And uh, the way, what I have done is uh, I've actually wired up in the back of the radio here, I've actually got uh, a big four way adapter here that I can plug in a, a variety of different 12 volt uh, systems. So I'm gonna connect up the Huawei first. And uh, after I've connected it up, I will do a speed test. And then when I come back to you, I will overlay the speed test on the screen just to show you what it's getting. Okay, so um, as you can see from the speed test above, um, I was getting about 14 megabits per second down and a high, I think, of about 30, 31 up. So for upload speed, really good for, um, if I want to do a live stream or something like that there, it would work well for that. Download speed's fine for watching Netflix, um, you know, doing Facebook, Twitter, things like that there. So yeah, if you want to do live streaming, that works quite well. It's a bit lower than it was the last time. The last time I did a speed test down here it was in its 30s. Um, I'm not 100% sure maybe if it's this cable. Uh, it's maybe, you know, obviously the length of it is going to lose me some speed. Uh, but uh, yeah, this cable is nice and thick. So I don't think, and I've tested this above ground, um, you know, just at home. And it's, you know, it's perfect. So I don't think I'm losing, I'll probably be losing two or three megabits from this. But uh, yeah, okay, we'll switch over now to the TP-Link. Um, okay, so we can see from this speed test uh, that we are getting roughly the same download speed. You can see my uh, signal isn't as high as on the other modem, or the other router, which is quite interesting. Uh, obviously all connected up exactly the same way, the same cables sitting in the same place, and the antenna hasn't moved. And, uh, but the upload speed is significantly less, um, almost half, in fact. Uh, so in terms of uh, doing a live stream, I could probably do it, just about. I don't know if it would be HD or not, but I could definitely do it. Uh, and then obviously, do again, doing Netflix, uh, doing Wi-Fi phone calls, running the Teletalk, all that will work fine. And that is using three and with a TP-Link router. So Virgin, which was really, really good. I'm not sure, maybe the, maybe one of their antennas or their masts is uh, getting a bit of work done to it or something, but uh, definitely uh, the two of them work well down here. If I think if I want to do live streams, that's the one I'm going to use. Now you might need a few bits, other bits and pieces. Now I've wired up a telephone connection point to the surface. If you're going to use that for your internet, you will need a few adapters to plug into that. And uh, you know, it's a normal telephone cable. Um, a little modem like that will not work. Uh, if it takes an external antenna, you will be able to get a signal above ground. But when I took out my Fake 3 contract, I, uh, I got this 4G sort of portable router for free uh, along with the contract, but that will not work down here. But yeah, that sort of is how you would get internet. I mean, you could bring it down in through the vent. If you're a master post, you could bring it down in here, I suppose. You could, if you wanted it to, bring it through the original telephone connection. Um, you could bring it down the BPI pipe, things like that there. Um, but, and then obviously, if you're gonna be wiring up some 240 volt, uh, so you can run things with 240 volt. But I like being able to do it with batteries and running everything with 12 volt off a battery. And it just keeps everything nice and tidy and keeps things separate. So if you're running 240 volts, you don't have to worry about any interference then on the modem itself. But uh, yeah, I hopefully you find that interesting. It's, uh, it's taken me a sort of a, quite a while to do this video, I know, and I'm sorry about that. Obviously with lockdown, it was quite difficult sort of to, to come out here. Um, but uh, hopefully you'll be pleased to hear that I have now had my COVID vaccine. Uh, so yeah, I feel a little bit safer now, being able to venture out and uh, 
yeah, hopefully everybody else gets there is pretty soon and we can sort of start to go back to a bit of normality. But uh, yeah, through the summer, there will be much more videos about the bunker to come um, as I come down here and start uh, getting above ground, sorted, get the grass cut, things like that there. Start maybe doing a bit of painting and uh, start getting some of the new exhibits uh, put in place. So that the carrier, sort of the nuclear warning point, I'll be getting that done after the sort of the uh, wiring, new wiring job I did over into the warning speaker. So yeah, I'll be doing the video on that pretty soon. It's all connected up, ready to rock and roll, and I'm really looking forward to doing that. And what, what I think I will do is I'll do a split screen. So I'll do a, a camera down here looking at the warning speaker, and then I'll be up on the surface setting off all the warnings. And uh, yeah, we'll do that. I might even do a live stream for that as well. But listen, folks, as always, thank you very, very much for watching, and I'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.